All right, so I've never created a database on DigitalOcean Postgres. So I'm going to do DigitalOcean. And how to install and use Postgres on Ubuntu. Ubuntu, Postgres Tutorials DigitalOcean. I don't know, we'll start there. How to install and configure PG Admin 4 in server mode. How to manage a SQL database, introduction to queries in Postgres. How to set up Django and Postgres on Debian 9. So this will maybe tell us how to get Postgres going on Debian 9. That's us. So we'll go here. And... Django in order to complete the guide you should have a fresh Debian 9 server server setup guide so we've got sudo apt update uh, if you're using Django with Python 3 type Creating a Postgres SQL database. We're going to jump right in and create a database. So where did they install Postgres? Sudo apt install python pip, python dev, Postgres. So I'm going to just look for sudo apt install Postgres. See what come up with sudo apt install Postgres. sudo app update, so this looks good. I'm going to copy that and then I'm logged in here. Control C. I'm on there. Boom. So, whatever that is. And now I'm going to do this one. Done. And so now that I have Postgres, so I guess switch over to the Postgres account on your server by typing that. I'm not sure what that does. So now I'm at Postgres, and Postgres SQL, now I'm here, and, and then when you're ready to quit, just Q, but now I could do all my Postgres stuff. What's the database, right, correct? and check my databases. Now I have a Thanksgiving. And uh, I could change into that. And I could create table customers and it's going to be ID 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 serial primary key and what was it C first is that what I did text not null is that right Think what? I 
Um. I could insert And uh, and then I could also just get details. So that all looks pretty good, right? I think we got it. But we also need our users. So we'll look back at our code for that. So this, uh, this was uh, DigitalOcean, how to install and use PostgreSQL on Ubuntu 16.04, which is where I got this stuff. Those notes right there, really important. Take a screenshot of them. And then I did this and that, and we're running, and this is how we get out. I'll move this over here. So we're done here, and we're done there, and we're done there, and this is adding that thing, we're done there, and that's done, and that's done. I'll keep that open, and that was our local host. We're done with that, and documentation, and here's where we... Uh, Do the user stuff. What was it? Turkey? So we could look at our users, and now we could turkey super user. So I'm going to quit this, and to quit it, I guess I closed that already. I think it's backslash Q. Now I'm back to this. It says Postgres at Debian. I don't know how I switch back to that user. I closed that one tab. Pseudo IU root, I think is what I switch back to. Pseudo IU root. Mm, I don't know. Ah. I don't know. I'm just going to quit. Oh, I'm there. 
exit. I'm at root Debian, and I can print my working directory and ls, and I can run Texan. Ping successful. And now I could uh, go to our digital ocean. And drop that. That people is not localhost. Now, obviously, there's some rabbit holes there. An entire semester's worth of rabbit holes. The class in Linux, command line, terminal command line, right? Secure copy, that's a bit of understanding. And SSH, that's a bit of understanding. And, you know, eventually it'll be SSL, so you could serve HTTPS, secure. That's a bit of understanding. And encryptions behind all of that. And then there's database, Postgres and SQL administration, and all that. That's a semester or two of understanding. And then, you know, there's just making sure it's robust and backed up if you're building something to run. You know, like where's what happens if my droplet gets destroyed or my data gets too full? When does my disk size overrun? You know, how do I make sure that my application that I build just doesn't crash? I actually saw this in person. Those are the original Google servers. Yes. It's like it's like crappy wood between motherboards. Isn't that awesome? I guess it's in a museum somewhere now. I saw it at Google. Not when it was running, but when they just had it on display. This is Google now. Whoa. Amazing, isn't it? Talk about money, people. Anyhow, the point being is, uh, you know, at a certain point you go live and you say, I don't know, maybe it'll all break. But there's a lot of figuring out there. Your homework for next week, when you come in, I want you to have something deployed and running that you could show me on DigitalOcean. You've got all the videos, you just watch them and then, you know, do the steps as you go through it. And it just took an hour and 45 minutes for us to do it here in class. So it's going to take you four to six hours to do it at home. Watch, do, watch, do, right? One minute to watch, three minutes to do. <laughs> right but then you'll be able to pull some of that data down and then that'll that next week's week 16 and 17 and we'll learn crud create read update delete I'm not saying this is the easiest solution but it is the most powerful and it is the it, it's the most demanding master which will teach you the best technique.
It's not a sloppy master, right? Java is a bit sloppy. JavaScript's completely sloppy. But you're going to learn using this language really good coding. That's my theory. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure I destroy all this. And uh, to destroy it all, I'm going to go here to DigitalOcean and destroy. Droplet has been created. What? Destroy. Confirm. Droplet's been destroyed. That way I'm not getting charged. I think that's pretty amazing, y'all. It's really powerful. Like, you literally have the skills not that far from, you know, the people who created some of the best stuff. Like Facebook, this is it. Create, read, update, delete, stored in a database. It's the easy part. The hard part's getting the users. If uh, you want to take this class, Right there, baby. Right there.